Good afternoon and welcome to Amsterdam to Kickstart 2025, where I'm now joined by Judith Gardiner, Vice President of Growth and Emerging Markets at Equinix EMEA. Um, and Judith, pleasure speaking to you. Great um, to be here. Thanks for the invite. Welcome to sunny yeah. Amsterdam. It, <laughs> it wasn't like this yesterday, this no. Here, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first Kickstart? No, it's, I think right. it's my third. Okay, well, what are you finding about the conference this year? How, how do you think it's going? Well, I, f I find the, the conversations tend to be the same across the industry mm. right now. And mm. it's all about power and AI mm. and where to find it and what kind of data center mm. to build for it. Yeah. So would you say those are the main challenges that we're facing as an industry right now or, well, or people I, just don't know? I, I don't think know they're the, 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 the first ones that come to mind, but mm. I, I think there's, there's a whole joining of the dots challenge mm. right now. Um, you know, we have many markets which are having power challenges, but it, it kind of tends to focus mm. on the supply of power rather than the actual the, the state of the grid. And I think there's um, there's a lot of requirement, which is unfortunately long-term infrastructure investment required mm. in power grids. Mm. I would even say in water grids. And um, in addition to that, there is, you know, once you get the power, the land, you still have to go through permitting. You still have to go through regulatory. Mm. So it's a it's a long cycle. Even mm. though we feel this urgency in the industry to build as fast as we can and to provide our customers with capacity as mm. fast as we can, but. The limiting factors are are real. Are they? Yes. <laughs> I mean, the conversations happen a lot faster than than the actual building. Yes, exactly. Um, even with the nuclear conversation that we're having across the industry, it's still going to take five, six, seven years um, for nuclear to come to fruition. Um, well, yeah, it's not a tomorrow thing. That's one thing for yeah. sure. But I think even the, um, you know, the focus on the how clean the power is that we're mm. we're we're using. I think we almost need to start looking at what the backup power is first, mm. Mm. rather than the main source of supply. One hundred percent. And. Um, there's still that struggle about mm. moving away from diesel backup mm. to, to other reliable backup. But um, the great thing is there's a focus on clean energy. Mm. There's a, a great need now on the sustainability side. It's not mm. just, we're not just pushing the agenda, but there's a whole push in the agenda across the, the industry and not just the data center industry, but the whole digital infrastructure. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, the 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 AI topic is, it, it's, Every minute of every day. <laughs> what, what, what? I mean, you're touching on AI. So, what, what do you make of it? Um, and especially, at least the last two weeks, yeah. where you have a 500 billion dollar White House announcement on Stargate, then Deep Seek surges out of the blue. Yeah, I'm um, sure by next week there'll be something else. Exactly. Um, and now you're you're here, um, you know, investors defending the size of their. They all had to come out. Where about a month ago, people were mm. like, "Why isn't your investment even bigger?" than mm. it is so yeah I think it's it's that stage where things are just going to bounce around yeah. before they settle down yeah. but um, what do I make of it I think the at the moment when we're we're talking about AI and when we're talking to even governments about what they the, you know what their AI strategy is and what their plan is I think it's a, it's a very broad topic um, mm. and we really need to get into specifics I think it's been kind of oversimplified in one sense of having you know you need training modules and then you need to have inference, and then you need to be close to the edge. But already we're starting to see that you know become more of a diversification uh, conversation. Mm. Um, you have some markets which are way ahead in terms of it's just hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, and you have mm. some of the, the less developed markets still even just making their journey to the cloud. So mm. it's, it's quite different across the whole of EMEA mm. and not just Europe. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you before we jump into EMEA specifics, if yeah. we look at the global picture, because um, yeah. a lot of the conversations that we're having in these conferences that Europe, well, Europe in this case is pretty EMEA, it's kind of lagging behind compared to, to the Americas and compared to Asia. Yep. I mean, what's your take on that? I was just asking what's your take on things because literally this is where we are with everything these days. Yeah, I, um, you know, I think I think it's kind of a bit like the cloud journey. Mm. You know, the um, the US tends to tends to be ahead of us. Um, we will follow. I'm not so sure that mm. AP is necessarily behind us. I think I think we're probably on a par with AP, mm. obviously with, you know, what happened in the last two weeks has definitely questioned a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's probably put a different profile on, on the um, on the way the media has looked at what comes out mm. of, of Asia. But uh, but yeah, I, I, it's, I think it's just the nature of how, mm. how it goes. Mm, you know, okay. you've got, the US is one very large country made up of many states, but uh, they have that advantage. Mm. And a very different way of doing business across those states right. as well. Exactly. Um, exactly. When we looked into EMEA, so three very different regions: Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Yeah. What would you say are the main differences between them within all the things that we just mentioned? So, from power to regulation to AI, um, how um, how would you characterize each? Because of course, one is much further behind than, than yeah. the other one. 
Um, yeah. So how, how do you manage that? What's I would say yeah. Europe is ahead on the regulatory, mm. but we're still swirling on some of the regulatory. Mm. Um, I think the, the Middle East is still trying to figure mm. out how to be comfortable about mm. opening up their, their regulatory world, but they are moving mm. at a very fast pace um, in terms of, uh, they, I think in the Middle East, there's a realization that they need to open up far mm. more for investment to come mm. in. Um, so we are seeing a lot of developments there just even in the last eight to 12 months. Mm. And I think in, in Africa, it has other challenges in terms of just the, the macroeconomics of some of the countries, the power challenges of some of the countries, and there's definitely mm. more of a catch up there. Mm. Um, South Africa being the, the outlier, of course, mm. but um, yeah. Mm. You've also had a quite a few interesting um, acquisitions and yep. integrations into Equinix, like the main one platform right. um, in, uh, in Nigeria. In Nigeria, Nigeria yeah. Ghana and Cote yeah. d'Ivoire. Um, when you look at the map, and th this is no longer like, oh, I want to go to that country, yeah. therefore we're going to go. There's, there's a lot more that goes into it. What goes into it? What metrics do you look at? What, what are the, well, the, the growth trends yeah, that makes you I say like, oh, the, we should go? The first thing I look at are population, mm. uh, the, the average age of the population, which in, in Africa is crazy compared to anywhere else in the world. Mm. Um, and also just then the, the technological advancements mm. there and the appetite for digitization. Mm. Mm. Okay. And what other regions are you looking at at the moment? They say like, oh, we, this could be an opportunity for us. Um, well, I think we've swung our focus a lot more. Like last year was definitely more on, mm. on Africa and getting our South Africa mm. business um, up and running. Um, it's more, we've swung more to the Middle East right now. We're seeing okay. a huge amount of demand in our, in our current business in the UAE, um, also in Oman, um, mm. Turkey, you can say whether it's you know, EMEA yeah, or both, Europe yeah. Or, yeah. or Middle East, but a really big yeah. surge in demand there as well. Mm. And, um, and yeah, we're just assessing other markets mm. in the Middle East. Mm. Okay. Will we see Equinix going more organically or would you go for some acquisitions in those spaces? Uh, I think you'll probably see a combination. Okay. Um, you know, the main thing right now is capacity. Hmm. So, um, and it's not as simple as you just buy an empty data yeah, center no, no, and you okay. fill it. <laughs> there's <laughs> no, a lot more to it than that. Yeah. yeah, but um, I think you'll you'll probably see you know more organic growth hmm. in terms of how we would have weighted it compared to a few years yeah. ago. I think it'll be more organic versus acquisition, okay. whereas before it was probably more acquisition than. If we look at the Equinix map for the Middle East and Africa yep. in 2030, yep. what can we expect to see? How many, I don't know how many facilities, but what can we expect to see in terms of portfolio across those regions? Yeah, so there, there is a, there's a definite, we have a, a term which is build bolder. So we are building bolder in all our main markets. Um, and also some of the markets I just mentioned in, in terms mm. of the Middle East where we're seeing demand, you know, customers are basically mm. asking us to do a lot more um, in the past, we built more in, in a phase-like uh, way of, of approaching things, whereas now we're just going to be building at a much oh, yeah. bigger rate. Mm. Um, I would say, you know, on average, the, the build sizes will be 50 to 100 plus megawatts. Mm. Um, and like I said, we'll be focusing yeah. more on our main markets initially. Yeah. And those 50 to 100, also including Africa, builds in Africa? Yeah, depending okay. on demand. Yeah. And definitely we see more demand in South Africa. Mm. Um, I think. We will see more demand coming out of Nigeria, but it's just at a, at a different pace than okay. in South Africa. Interesting. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening around the subsea cable side in West Africa, East Africa, mm. all around the Middle East, um, which has also been you know, a key part of our strategy when you think about Lisbon. Mm. Um, and I think our, our new site in Salala is really interesting in mm. Muscat. So that's a, you know, you've got the, the, the very large data center builds and then you have the more interconnection hub sized. Okay. I was going to bring it back to Europe and you've mentioned Lisbon. I mean, I'm yeah. from Lisbon. Yeah. What's your plans for, for Lisbon and Portugal, uh, which well, is becoming we, an Atlantic hub? Yeah, so we are, we will be opening our new data center there in the next, I think the next couple of weeks actually, mm. uh, Lisbon too. Um, and we have plans to continue there as mm. well because the, you know, in the past, the sizes of the requests from our you know connectivity customers mm. were like the 250 kva size things now they're one to five megawatt mm. per network mm. um so that requires obviously bigger yeah. builds yeah. and you know when you see just how the network the the subsea cables you know they also take a long time mm. to, build, to build but the when they come on there's there's different names behind them mm. than there used to be and i think the definitely the involvement of google and meta has Pushed. moved things on mm. significantly mm. and I think there's also there's also the d big disruptor I think in that space in the last year as well has been the just the the Leos the low orbit satellites yep. which have um, been quite a disruptor in the in mm. in Africa is where I've noticed okay. it the most 
and where we've probably engaged with you know customers far more in that perspective yeah. than we would have before. All right, that's very interesting. I mean, we're literally having a chat. This is nothing that's been written <laughs> down on this, but because satellites was a big thing that uh, PTC really focused on this oh, year. Okay. Um, and it was the first time in 40 years that there was so much conversation around yeah. satellites. Um, people were literally saying, just look at data centers and look at the satellite dishes on the data center building. Yeah. So you've already mentioned that in Africa, that's a big part of the, 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 oh, it's a huge the disruptor. project. Yeah, it's huge disruptor because mm. of the lack of fiber. Now, I don't yeah. think they'll ever replace fiber mm. in the ground, but you know, the, you're seeing people that never had access to internet getting mm. access to internet for a very low cost. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more competition coming in, but I think the disruption is, you know, that has happened in the, in the last eight mm. to 12 months is quite significant. Mm. When we were doing the preparation and the, you know, the due diligence around main one, main one have a satellite farm. Mm. And at the time it wasn't such a, a big deal. Like, oh, it wasn't, this? you know, yeah. it was like, well, <laughs> that's interesting that they have it. That makes yeah. sense. But um, now it's, yeah, it's become quite a, uh, a significant thing. And it's often, I think you'll see it as well be quite a disruptor in Latin America. Mm. Um, we're seeing it also evolve, you know, in mainland Europe too. It's not like mm. the, you know, the whole mainland Europe I was going to ask if you thought it was more fiber. like for underdeveloped markets, or if it's going to come into I more developed markets as well. I think the biggest disruptor yeah. piece is in the more underdeveloped markets, yeah. but you know, you still have parts of mm. many developed countries which don't have fiber mm. the whole way to a home. Mm. And I, I think it's a great alternative, mm. but um, I don't know what the longevity looks like, Yeah. but uh, but definitely the, it's created a completely different uh, landscape from that perspective. Could Equinix go into the satellite business at some no, point? No, I don't. I, it's, <laughs> it's, we're happy to, to accommodate and facilitate. <laughs> to, to stay on Earth. Yeah, to, we're <laughs> to happy to stay on Earth, <laughs> for sure. But but it's not just the Leos, it's also mm. the, the Mios as well. Mm. So mm. it's, yeah, wh where it'll mm. go. You'll, okay. need to, you'll need to find some of the um, SpaceX team to talk yeah. to about all of no, this. No, no, it's, it's very interesting. And they actually do reply, so they're yeah, not yeah, too yeah. difficult to get through. It might be difficult yeah. to get them on the record, but yes, they do reply. What I, what I love about just the ingenuity around this area mm. is just the, how agile the teams are. Yeah. You know, in Africa you had a, I'm gonna get all the terminology wrong, but you basically <laughs> had a thing the size of an iPhone, yeah. which was 50 bucks, that would connect a home, mm. and it was just too expensive. So yeah. they just have the size, have the price, and, yeah. and it just, yeah. you know, it, you it created a huge yeah. amount of connectivity. And when you think about the average age of the populations, mm in any of the African countries, you already have a completely, you're, you're like tapped right into a market there that's mm. so digital savvy and such a consumer of data that um, if anything, it's going to just force and prove out the, um, you know, the investment is worth mm. it. Mm. And I think maybe that's what the disruption okay. will be. Interesting. We, we might have a chat on satellites on a separate occasion because I think it is becoming a big topic this year. Yep. Um, yep. Just bring it back to Europe, and I also know you have to go at some point. Um, because we've spoken about uh, Lisbon becoming a, an Atlantic hub, but then Europe is also booming across the Mediterranean, yep. across the Nordics. The yep. Nordics are having a very strong comeback yep. uh, on the back of AI, Central Europe, Eastern Europe. Um, yep. What's the Equinix plan for Europe for, for this year and next year? Well, I think from an interconnection perspective, it's, it's that Mediterranean corridor, so mm. Lisbon, Barcelona, Genoa, then all the way over to yep. Salala and Muscat. Um, for uh, you know, it's it's no secret that the Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, Paris is um, not only power constrained but capacity mm. constrained. So words. you're going to start seeing the centers of gravity, as we're calling mm. them, shift from the flap mm. into other markets like Madrid, Milan. Um, I think Warsaw. You'll start seeing, I think, more coming into the Nordics. Mm. Um, I'm actually on a panel for the Nordics um, mm. later on this afternoon, and I think the Nordics. You know, the power is great. It's mm not expensive for con for and those that want to consume it there's plenty of it but still the the workloads are still landing more in Amsterdam and Frankfurt mm. than they have been in in Stockholm or Helsinki or Oslo so I think that shift will happen yeah. but um, we're even seeing we have we run customer advisory boards in each of our regions and you know that's that's the type of questions we're being asked is where else have you got compa capacity yeah. I think the the default has always been the flap and the reason has always been latency, whereas I'm not so sure that if you peel back a few more layers down, is it really latency? I think there's it's something else. It's down to the application. It's down case. to the application, yeah. exactly. And that's case by case. Exactly. Mm. So, so that's what you're going to see from Equinix mm. is the, the shifting okay. of the centers of gravity. Okay. What's the, the, the CapEx, CapEx budget for Equinix EMEA? Over the next 12, That's where I might months. get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's my only money question, I promise. <laughs> well, I think from an X scale perspective, you know, we announced a very large, yeah, we yeah. announced a very large um, partnership in the US. I think you will see something similar 
um, being being worked on for EMEA. Hmm. I think that was around 15 billion. Um, okay. And I would say on the, yeah, just on the retail side, yeah. it will probably be yeah. similar. Okay. And it's all, it's two new trenches. It's not something that has been announced. It will be a new wave of investment. Yeah, you'll start yeah. seeing things, you know, it takes 24 to 36 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's assuming yeah. the supply yeah. chain is all <laughs> behaving itself the way it should, yeah, you know. Which we shall see with all the tariffs and right, exactly. the economic trade, so, what is going on at the moment, yes. or starting to going on. Yes. Uh, so, I'm just trying to stay in my world of <laughs> growth in emerging markets and not get too much noise from outside yeah, it and no. stick to the plan. It's, it's a very good point that you make because there's so much noise around, it's easy to lose track. Yeah. It's easy to go off, um, off the yeah. rail track and really get lost. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's both within the industry and outside the industry yeah, uh, in exactly. the world that we live in. Exactly. But uh, Judith, when you're back here for Kickstarter 2026, your fourth edition, <laughs> yeah. um, what's the one thing you would like to have accomplished in 12 months? Oh gosh, um, I'd like to be able to announce probably four big investments, okay. as in four large market investments, not okay. just four data centers. Well, we'll be here to see what yeah. th those four announcements will be. But, uh, Judy Gardiner, uh, Vice President of Growth and Emerging Markets at the Equinix EMEA. Sorry, it's That's sometimes okay. the longer titles <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. read them. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Um, as for your home, thank you for watching. And do check our website and social media for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the globe. At the tech capital you lead, we report. Bye for now.